I am Emma Massingale, horse trainer and adventurer. Hi everyone. Well, today it is absolutely appalling weather here. Um, so I thought today I'd make a video indoors so I can stay warm and dry. Um, and I thought what I'd do is I'd share with you all the kit I take with me when I head out on an adventure with my ponies. So this is kind of like summer kit. Um, and I might do another one of these for winter if everyone's interested because the, the kit you need to take with you is kind of... Um, you know, it's quite important uh, it's for safety for having a good time and just for being comfortable and obviously we need to make sure that the horses have everything they need as well because obviously if you're out all day long and um, say you're up on the moors something like that you need a little bit of equipment with you just to make sure you're safe and, and can have a good time so let me show you all the stuff and I'll go through it individually and hopefully I can share with you where to get it all as well so that you can all set yourselves up to have all the right equipment that you need the kit I'm going to show you today is kind of set up really for moorland and wilderness type places. Um, <laughs> Inky. So this would be what I would take if I was just going out for the day. This is not an overnight setup. This is purely just for a day long trip up onto the moors. Okay, so let's get started. Now I'm not going to show you these in any particular order or they're not a priority. Um, I take all of this stuff with me on every single day hike I go on. So j I'm just going to show you them in the order as they are in front of me. Um, right, the first thing to show you I think is probably taking one of these with you. Now this is a huge one because we've been running the clinics. Um, but this is what's called a basher or a lightweight tarp. And it's really good for setting yourself up to be able to have some shelter. Now most of the places that I go end up being really wet <laughs> even in the middle of summer you can guarantee that you are going to get rained on um, and so I just chuck one of these in you can get them really small they can come in like ones this big just for single use just um, keeps the rain off you you can set up camp you can have a cup of tea you can provide some shelter for the horses if you need to um, just a really good thing to chuck in the bag as well and as I said this is a huge huge one I really like these from D&D hammocks um, they do a super light um, and a single smaller one um, that's about this big in size so it's perfect for shoving in the bottom of your rucksack there and uh, this one is enormous I mean it covers all of my mini Liberty team so I can have I think uh, probably the eight ponies will fit underneath this as well as myself um, so it's a really big shelter okay so next I've got this which is a full raven blanket and it rolls up it's got these straps so you can roll it up neatly um, I've got it opened up here and it's just wool on the inside and it's like a wax canvas on the outside so when you lay it down on the ground it is waterproof you're not going to get wet um, which is really nice it just makes the whole experience of going out much more enjoyable <laughs> Nancy. Um, so I've gone through lots of blankets and there's nothing worse than putting a blanket down sitting on it and then it being sodden a few minutes later so really really good really nice really useful this one just rolls up nice and small and I usually put it either in one of the ponies backpacks or on the top of mine if I'm just riding. Well, I can't get far without having to... <laughs> now, I always have my teapot with me. Um, I've got various colours of them, as you guys probably know by now. Uh, the reason I take the teapot with me is just because it's a kind of reminder just to not always be in such a hurry. Um, it's easy to go, 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 and especially when you're up on the moors, it's not always easy to think, oh, I'll just stop for a while here. Um, but the teapot reminds me that just to hold, give the horses a break, let them switch off completely, and then they have a really enjoyable experience as much as I do. So, and also, if you're going to go wild swimming, um, which I often do, it's a really good way of warming up afterwards. But the teapot is more of a reminder to just chill out. <laughs> I always take a couple of water bottles with me. So this one here is just a Zilco one. It's um, you can get them online. This one comes actually. It's got a, a pouch um, thing, and I'll put a little picture of it up here. So you can see uh, and it just clips onto your saddle but this is just the bottle out of it um, it's actually a really good bottle it's really sort of heavy duty um, and really reusable it's not going to break in a couple of goes. so i recommend these um so i got these off riding and harness stuff um their website and i think they're about eight or nine pounds for the, the the pouch as well that clips onto your saddle and again i'll put all the links in the description below so that you've got all those as well the other water bottle I take with me is made by Pure Hydration and this is a really cool water bottle um, you don't ever have to fill it up before you go um, because it has its own filter so if you're up on the moors or anywhere you can literally scoop the water up from any river anywhere where there's been sheep peeing, mud, whatever, it doesn't matter scoop the water up, pop the filter, screw the top on and you can squeeze out nice clean water um, so it's kind of you know really good for for safety and making sure that you've always got access to fresh water 
Next up, always take a cup and a spoon or a spork, as these are called. Obviously, they're a spork, it's got a fork, a knife, and a spoon on the end of it. Um, I just picked these up off Amazon. Uh, this cup comes from Mole Valley, um, but you can pick up these forks and stuff just off Amazon for a few quid, really easy. I always have my little waterproof bag, and I should add that these waterproof bags are brilliant. Like, they're really, really good. You can buy them um, off Amazon or anywhere, really, any sort of outlet store, outdoor shop. Um, you buy them, I usually buy them in like um, groups, you know, packets of sort of five or six, and they come in sort of all different sizes. Um, and they're just really good for keeping everything nice and clean and in one place. And um, you can colour code them as well. So I've got a blue one here that's got um, horse uh, holding equipment, and my red ones have more, like this one's got kitchen stuff in it. And, you know, they're just really nice for keeping everything nice and dry and, and, and clean. So they're quite cool. Inside this one, I usually have sugar. <laughs> Always have tea bags. Can't go in here without tea bags. And I put them in these plastic pots because they're reusable and um, yeah, and it just keeps them nice and fresh as well. And then I also usually have some coffee here and some milk. These are really good milk things. You can pick these up from the supermarket. Just um, single use, long life milk. Um, but also you can just buy online, you can get these little bottles. Uh, little plastic bottles for a few pence and they're reusable and I just fill them up with milk before I go and um, yeah that's my kind of tea and having a nice day bag now moving on to this one so this one is this is why I've got my stove in okay so this stove is absolutely brilliant I highly recommend this company it's Primus um, and they make lots of different types of stoves so you can just have a look and choose one that suits you I really like this one um, I've been through quite a few now, but it, this is definitely up there with the best yet. So, as you can see, everything just stores in this pot. So that is it. That is the complete stove and everything, and it's really, really small. Uh, it's got a really fast boil, so that's the gas bottle. Really small. Um, I think that's 100 mil, mil in the bottom of that one. So, and it lasts, I don't know, it lasts quite a while. You know, you'd be surprised. I mean, I've probably been out three or four times and there's, there's still gas in it. Um, and it just screws on the bottom here. And what's cool about this one is, so that's your setup basically now. Um, and you can just pour your water in there. And this comes on here, and this clips on here as a handle, like so. So that once you've, you've boiled the water, you can just pour it out, you can un unscrew it and just pour it out using the handle. Um, so really, really neat, really cool. Uh, it's also really good in the wind. So often with these things, these stove things, are either really unbalanced um, or the wind just kills them and they just keep blowing out all the time. Even if you find somewhere really sort of secluded and windproof, you still end up with them blowing out. So definitely recommend this company, Primus Company, and just pick whichever stove you like. I mean, all their stoves are pretty good. I've probably got um, two or three of their different ones. Um, but this one's definitely up there with my favourite, just because it's small, compact, light, and really easy. And the other good thing about it is, if you can see, I don't know if you see there, it has a button. So you just turn the gas on and push the button and then it ignites. So you don't have to remember to bring a cigarette lighter or matches because I never remember. <laughs> I never remember. Um, so anything that's got one of those on it is always a winner in my book. So that's my stove set up. Okay, and then moving on to the horse bit. Um, so the first bit about taking the horses is how are we going to hold them if we need to? So now obviously when you're riding you don't necessarily you're on top of them and you might not necessarily think you need to hold on to them but I still think when you're out and about in these wild places or remote places or just out for a long day you do kind of need to be able to hold on to them because you never know what situation might arise so even if I'm out with my tribe and I've got them all loose they're just grazing on their own I've just let them go on the moor um, because I feel confident at liberty that that's okay I would still always have this stuff with me okay so the first thing is I use these which are called an orange screw and it is literally called an orange screw <laughs> uh, and you just screw it into the ground okay now you can it, you push this the hold of it through there and then you just screw it into the into the ground and it holds still and then you can just clip the lead rope on it um, and for Shetlands and small ponies this it will hold them there they can't pull it out of the ground for bigger horses what I tend to do with them is I might screw it into a bank or um, 
you know somewhere sort of higher up so it's not a ground level um, and I would then use it like I would a tie-up ring at home in the yard something like that now these if they really pulled back I reckon they would pull them out of the ground I think it would just pop out um, but I think they would need it kind of is a bit like um, maybe using like heavy duty binder cords so if your horse is good at tying up which hopefully you guys will practice that a lot anyway they all tie it really well you can just tie them straight to this if you're at all worried you can just clip a, um, a bit of string to it or something else um, but it's really cool you can just hook them into a hedge or bank or wherever and you know they're going to stay there so really cool bit of kit really useful other options are so obviously up on the moors there's not that many banks or places like that so we have to have other options as well so so hopefully you've all watched my um high line oh my gosh look at this mess <laughs> really needed to sort my kid out perhaps it's a good job it's raining so i have my high line and i always carry a high line with me this is like four high lines tied in one big knot <laughs> when i was out the other day oh no um anyway you've seen that video so i don't need to show you that but i do always have my piece of rope with my my prosec loops tied on it to be able to hitch my horses up now that's fantastic for being out down in the woods but it's terrible if you're up on the moors because there's no trees there are no trees or very few trees um anywhere accessible or nice so what i use up on the moors is i use these now these are called a cam or a climbing friend okay and um you can buy these new if you buy them new they're quite expensive or you can pick them up on ebay really cheap and they come in all different sizes so I've got various different size ones here, like this. And what you do with them, I'll show you with the bigger one because it's pretty easy to see. You just pinch them like this. You insert them into a rock or crack and then you release them and then they hold um, into the rock like that. And you can see on this one here, I've been. you can use it either to set your high line up. So you can use it as the anchor point like a tree is on either side. So you can tie between two granite rocks or you can use it as a single tie up and so i've just got a bit of baler cord on there and um, so you could just tie your horse straight to that to hold them in against a rock or um, against one of the tours or something like that so really really useful really good bit of kit they come in all different sizes so you can get little tiddly ones micro ones um right up to, to these ones i probably find these these sizes are pretty good um and again i'll put some links in below but i'll write what they are and you might find them uh, easier to find them on eBay and places like that secondhand or Facebook marketplace because what they're used for climbing and um, you know obviously for a climber they put them in the rock and they they put a carabiner on them and then their life depends on it so if they fell off they're relying on this to hold them from plummeting to the ground but these get a bit old and a bit worn out and you can see they've got little teeth on them and they become not quite safe enough for a climber but they're perfectly uh, fine for what we need them for so secondhand on eBay is quite a good place to, to find those okay the other thing I always take with me is one of these now this is a just a collapsible water bucket um, no, no particular make you know you can there are quite expensive ones I've got one that's um, made by Outfitters supply company which is like a an outdoor place but you know it was like 20 quid I think um, whereas these are maybe be five or six pounds so you can pick them up really cheap but they are really useful and nice to be able to give the horses a drink as well um, they hold quite a lot of water and easy to, to fetch water out of streams and things like that the next thing i always take with me is i always take with me an amount of horse feed okay so my horses at home are fed on denji hi-fi light they just get a small handful every day with their pro feet they get multivitamins um, they get salt and various things like that supplements in their diet depending on what they need so some are on stoppage if they've got sweet itch all those sort of things but when i go out on an adventure or a trip out i always like to take with me a bag of um denji chuff now i usually upgrade it to a sort of higher quality one than what they're on so for example if my my guys are on denji hi-fi light i might upgrade it for my adventure so i might just pop them on a denji and i'll put them pictures of what i use here and here so you can see um, but if I was taking custard out, say, I might upgrade his. So he, he has Denji um, normal hi-fi, so that's with a bit of molasses in it. So I might upgrade his to the Denji Alpha A oil. Do you know something like... So if you know if you go out for a hike or something like that, you would probably take with you a bar of chocolate or something, an extra special treat for you. Now, I think with the when you take the horses out and you come into a place where you're going to stop and you're going to make your cup of tea or maybe have your lunch or whatever you're going to do, or go for a swim i think it's nice to mark that point with a little snack for the horses so i usually try and take some sort of chaff because i can either spread it around 
on the ground a bit so it takes them a little bit longer to eat it or um, I can just put it in a little bowl um, you can get collapsible bowls as well uh, there's one here like this this is quite neat this is like a mini sized one but you can just pop a bit of chaff in there you can see just a little tiny mini bowl um, and you know it just marks this point so it says to the horses right okay this is our break this is where we're stopping now and they learn that then they can just eat a little bit of chaff and then they wander around grazing um, if they're not able to wander around um, and I've got them on the high line I still like to give them the chaff so I'd either unclip them and just let them have it on the ground for a minute and then tie them back up again I think it's just a really nice way of marking a pause in whatever it is we're doing okay so onwards from there Next thing I always take with me, always take a first aid kit. Yeah, it's always easy to forget and to think, ah, oh, well, I'm only going out for the day. But you never know what happens. And these are super, super light. You can shove them in your backpack um, or in your saddlebag, wherever. But really useful. I usually adapt mine, so they usually have a bit of horse. Um, I've just needed this one out of Jeremy's rucksack, actually, but my one's the same. But um, I usually have a little bit of more horse orientated, so I've got a horse bandage in mine. But as you can see, they've just got all the necessary in there. Um, should anything happen because you know let's face it it can with animals <laughs> and wild places so try and always make sure you've got a little small first aid kit with you always carry a pocket knife with me um, and I prefer to have one of these like multi-tool things um, so they've got little saws tin openers knives uh, screwdriver you know you just never know what you're gonna need and you might as well just have it all in one tool really useful and just always make sure that you've got a knife with you I think it's really important Next thing, obviously, is a map and a compass. Do, 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 do. It is no good going up on the moors or any wild places and not having these. And more importantly, not knowing how to use these. You know, we should all know if you're going up on the moors, say you're going up on Dartmoor, you don't want to be going anywhere out off a main path if you cannot read a map and compass and use a compass. So I take both of those with me and sometimes I'll often have more than one compass with me as a backup just in case. And I also have my phone with me always as a backup and that I've got the OS maps and navigation thing on there so that I can tell where I am and I can navigate with that as well as like a secondary backup should anything happen. But always take those with you. Okay, so then we're on to the fun bits. <laughs> So if I'm going out with the mini ponies or something like that, I usually take my wetsuit with me. So I've got it in just one of these, another one of those waterproof bags. Because I don't know about you, putting on a horrible wet wetsuit isn't particularly pleasant. So I tend to just keep it um, in a bag. Now I like to use, um, I've got it for the summer, I've got just a three mil orca wild swimming uh, wetsuit. It's really nice, it's really light. It compacts down really small, you can squidge it right up. Um, but I think the most important thing of that is you can just use a swimming costume if you're really, really hard. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> it's cold. And in the winter, I'd probably upgrade that to my heavier weight with wetsuit, maybe a 7 or 8 mil. Um, but the most important piece of that is having little booties. So even if you're going in in a swimsuit, try and always make sure to go in with something on your feet. Okay, because if you're up on the moors, the first bit and you're going in the water, the first thing you're going to injure, if you're going to injure any part of you, will be your feet. You'll stand on something, you'll cut your feet and then it's just horrible, unpleasant, and can be a bit dangerous. You know, if you're walking, you're hiking, and then you've cut your foot, just not pleasant. So a couple of these little booty things, they scrunch up really small, you can stuff them in, but definitely take these those with you. And then a towel, I like these. I just got these off, off Amazon again, I think. Just a sports and travel towel. Um, no particular make, I don't think. Just a couple of quid, I think they're like five or six quid. Just really light micro towel, and they're quite big. This is quite thick, but you know, in such a small bag, a packet, actually. Um, you know, it's a, it protects you, gets you nice and dry, and also it's quite a big, big towel, as you can see. Ta -da. Um, so those are really good, really good. If I've got the dogs with me or Louie with me, I have to think of them as well. And the weather up on the moors can change a lot. So I do try and make sure that we always have our wet weather gear with us. So for the dogs or cats, I take, they always have a coat with me. Ariat very kindly sent me. <laughs> so I've got a new shiny one here to show you. I think this is Inca's. Yeah, this is Inca's one. Um, but I do always have some sort of coat or jacket or some way of keeping them warm and dry. They don't necessarily wear them when we're hiking or when they're running alongside, but when you stop, it's amazing how cold it gets. 
And although you might be thinking, oh, I'm not going to go up on the moors and I'm not going to stop, you never know what might happen. So I think it's really important that we can keep everybody warm and it does make a massive difference to them. You know, I don't like seeing them shivering, so good to have a coat for them. And leading on to what I take with me, even if it's the middle of summer, always take with me a pair of lightweight waterproof trousers. These are just regatta outdoor chibi jobbies because they can pack really, really small. Um, and again, these can work brilliantly as keeping the wind off you. So you'll stay instantly much, much warmer. You can put them on over your trousers or even over your bare legs if you need to, because you've got your clothes really wet and it will keep you nice and warm while you dry out the rest of your stuff. So try and always make sure to have some waterproof trousers with you. A beanie, always take a beanie. Keeping your head warm is so important, especially if you're going wild swimming or you're likely to get, you know, be out there for a long period of time. It's, it keeps you the warmest, you know? A lot of heat is lost through your head, so definitely try and chuck one of those in. Even in the middle of summer, I take a waterproof coat with me. Um, this is actually now probably a thicker waterproof coat, but you just want to make sure that if, it, if the weather changes, that you've got the right equipment to keep yourself warm and that the whole experience is still enjoyable and safe. So always make sure you pack a waterproof coat. You can find like little small ones you can compact in or you can take a slightly bigger warmer one depending on how much you feel the cold really i also usually have one of these and i've just unpacked it but this is a, a down jacket uh insulated jacket and it goes inside a stuff sack so again it compacts up really really small and you can just stuff it in somewhere uh, and you know that you're going to be able to then keep yourself uber uber toasty and warm if you need to okay now this is <laughs> it seems like a lot of stuff but actually it compacts down really small and can fit into just one rucksack or just into my saddle bags on the back of my normal saddle if i'm riding um so the last thing i usually try and take with me as well is either one of these or one of these now obviously if i'm using my saddle bag then i probably wouldn't take this one um this is actually a chair um but it's really 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 comfortable it's it's just fits together all slots together very good day. Take two seconds. And there we have it. One very, very light, small chair. It's brilliant. It's really, really good for the kit. And um, amazing how much more comfortable a trip out can be if you've got one of those. But obviously that takes up a little bit more room. So secondary, I have one of these and these are really cool. This is made by Thermarest and they make my camping sleeping mat as well. But this is just an insulated um, seat basically. So you can put it down and it just keeps your bum warm and dry. So if you're needing to just, yeah, take a rest, look at the mat, spend a bit of time, keeps your bum off the ground, keeping it nice and warm and dry. And my dogs love these too. <laughs> they sit on them as well. Um, but really light, really easy to, to shove in the bag there as well. Well, that's all the kit I like to take with me for a summer outing. Now, the kit I would take for a winter outing would be quite different because obviously if you're dealing with potential snow, we get quite a lot of snow off on the moors here, um, or heavy rain, water, um, river crossings when the rivers are really full, you know, you do need slightly different equip with you, equipment with you for that. Um, so I would take slightly different kit set up for that. But hopefully it's given you some ideas and making adventures out with your horses for, for day long trips possible and doable and as I said I'll put all the links to all of the products and everything for the ones I have um, in the description so that you can see those and have access to those as well but um, yeah have fun go out and have some adventures and I'll see you on the next video